Okay, so it's time to move on to the definition of the word scale. We have our definition for a pitch class, which I'm just going to use the word note from now on pretty much always to mean pitch class. Now we need to know what a scale is. Of course, we know that a scale is in some sense made out of notes, but we need to figure out exactly how, and that's going to turn out to be a little bit more complicated than it might seem to be on the face of it, even though you probably already know some examples of scales and have an idea of what a scale is. You may also know that a scale typically has a special note, so that you hear people talking about things like the F major scale, where the note F has a special function in relation to it. We're going to figure all of that out now. So as a first attempt to defining these objects, let's consider a gamut, which by a gamut, all I mean is a collection of some, but not all, of the 12 notes. The 12 notes that we saw back here when we were looking at uh, the piano keyboard, we learned that there were 12 notes available. We're just going to pick some of them. The ones I'm going to pick, and you may recognize this already, the ones I'm going to pick are A, C, D, E, and G. Those are the notes I'm going to pick. We're just going to play those notes. And that's what I'm going to call using a gamut. We can certainly make music this way, but we're not playing a scale in the usual sense. So these are... So on. we can just go on and on. What we're missing is this idea of a special note, which we call the root note. And kind of a way of thinking about this is that the root note is put in charge of all the other notes, and it, it kind of organizes all the other notes and gives them meaning. So one way to do that, have a note sound like the distinguished note, like the root note, is to have it ringing out while we play the others. So I'm going to choose the, the note A to be my root note. And I'm just going to li just listen to the way that changes the sounds of all of these notes. So I'd really recommend, if you have an instrument you can do this with, that you just pause this video and try this yourself. Take those five notes, make the A a drone, and play around with those five notes and listen to the different effects they get. You probably find you want to end some of your phrases on the note A because that gives you a sense of resolution. There's the note A. It's not the same A, but it's the same pitch class. Notice also how the other notes get different flavours. The E, for example, gives you a kind of halfway stable sound. But it's not stable, it wants to finish. So that's the effect of the root note. It gives a kind of musical meaning to all of the other notes. And this looks like a good definition of a scale. We have a collection of notes, a gamut, and one of them is distinguished as the root note. And you might already know, in fact, that what I'm doing here really is playing the minor pentatonic. Whoops, excuse me. the minor pentatonic scale, <coughs> with A as the root. So we call it A minor pentatonic. So it seems like the, the A relates to this, and the minor pentatonic relates somehow to this whole collection. But this is not quite the right way to look at things. 
And the reason for that is that it doesn't help us, for example, to make B minor pentatonic. So it doesn't seem as if we've defined the minor pentatonic scale by thinking of it this way. Sure, we've got an example of a pentatonic scale, the A minor pentatonic, but it doesn't seem like we've got a hold of the concept of minor pentatonic in itself. We've got a lead here, but we haven't closed the case. We still don't have a definition of the word scale that seems to work right. We will get to that, but it'll be useful to introduce a different way of naming the notes first.